Detroit Lions at home week three coming off an OT loss that cost them some buzz. Now they face the Atlanta Falcons who are attracting plenty of it after starting the year 2-0. This is for the lead. Who's kick from 25 yards out. Gives Atlanta a one-point advantage. These birds are feeling dirty. I don't know if they're Luda 50-yard line dirty yet, but they have a chance to go 3-0, and and if Detroit can't figure out a way to stop Bijan Robinson, they could get there. It's Robinson. Cannot coach that. Game preview guy landed in the hospital last week, broken an ankle, and I was only watching Robinson. Lions defensive players should put on some knee and ankle braces this week just to be safe. The Bijan mustard was laid on thick last week, over 120 yards rushing, 6.5 per run. And pick up the first down, Robinson. Gutsy call from Arthur Smith. And it pays off. Lions also have to worry about Desmond Ritter taking off in key situations. He ran it 10 times in week two and scored. On fourth down, it is Ritter. And Desmond Ritter is in for a Falcons touchdown. Not done, Motor City Kitties. Seriously, some Lions fans don't know about that nickname. You're going to face plenty of Tyler Algier runs, even if he was kind of quiet last week. The ground is Atlanta's O-Face. From the 44, on first down, it's Algier with a big burst. So what does Detroit have to offer back? They faced a pass-oriented offense week one. Kenneth Walker in week two? Yes, they gave up two TDs, but 2.5 yards per carry allowed on 17 tries overall. Walker. Cut up the middle, not much room there. Played well by this Detroit defense. They let Geno Smith escape for a 15-yard scamper, though, for what that's worth. Worse, they let Geno destroy them through the air, though. After looking solid versus Patrick Mahomes, they let Smith go for over 325 yards, 8 yards per attempt, 2 TDs. They didn't pick him off. A rating allowed over 115. Smith to throw. Great throw, lock it down in for the end zone. It's over. Maybe it's harder for the Lions secondary when the other team has actual receivers. And Atlanta has one. Drake London, six catches over 65 yards and a touchdown last week. Ritter, over to his left, throws, there it is. end zone, touchdown, Drake London! Don't be shocked if he finds his way to Waldo. Detroit cornerback Jerry Jacobs needs a major rebound. Eight targets, eight catches allowed, 85 yards and a score versus Seattle. Pass time over the middle, it's caught by Metcalf! Lions hope they can get cornerback Emmanuel Mosley back. That would help. He missed last week. Atlanta's passing attack isn't the driver of their bus, but they would welcome over 230 yards passing, over 7 yards per attempt from Ritter again, despite the sub-80 rating. If Bajan and Tyler are hitting, Ritter and company just need to supplement. And look at the placement of that football. Very accurate. That was phenomenal. Will Aiden Hutchinson make it to see mom? Detroit won't have defensive end James Houston on the left side of its pass rush. He's hurt. So extra pressure on Hutchinson to make some noise on the right side. Has zero sacks through two games. Right tackle Caleb McGarry will be his adversary this week. Ritter only got sacked once in week two, but faced pressure over 45% of his dropbacks. So Hutch should have chances. Ritter wrapped up. Out he goes. Detroit's offense now needs to avoid giving the ball away three times like it did in their OT loss. That's a pretty good start. Ball is loose on the ground. And I think Seattle's got it. They lost two fumbles and Jared Goff was picked off once. Lions would take the rest of his week two box score this week. 28 to 35 over 320 yards passing, over nine yards per attempt, a rating over 120, three TDs. Goff protected. Going end zone. Reynolds. Falcons pass defense, Goff faces, took on Bryce Young week one, took care of business. Week two, Jordan Love. Forget the 110 plus rate in the three TDs, they're kind of deceiving. Falcons only allowed one pass of 18 plus yards, held Love to 151 yards on six per attempt. Incomplete, looking for Wicks, Terrell defending. AJ Terrell so smooth with it. Atlanta's secondary has to be able to slow Amon Ross St. Brown more than anyone, Goff's favorite target. Six catches, over 100 yards last week. Goff looking that way, throwing that way, and he's got a completion and a first down. Rise up is like, yeah, well, we have star cornerback A.J. Terrell. Couple passes defense last week, low 70s rating allowed. Left to the Ooh. 
Inside, broken up, nearly picked off by AJ Terrell. Problem is, St. Brown takes off from the slot. Terrell doesn't usually travel much. Other problem, Detroit's passing attack, multifaceted. Josh Reynolds, two scores last week, so he can't be ignored. Second read is there, touchdown Reynolds. Tight end Sam Laporta has been in on the action in both their games, five catches, 50 plus yards in week two. Over the middle, has a completion to Laporta, who breaks free, Laporta inside the 10, Sam Laporta. And Atlanta has to cover Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield, only 39 yards on seven catches, but led the team in targets last week. Third and seven here, Goff gets rid of it, over the middle, Gibbs has it, looks like he's got a first down. Falcons defense handled every type of pass catcher in week two, and also handled handled Green Bay's rush attack. Aside from Love getting away once, Falcons stuffed Packers runners. Here's Dillon, and he was wrapped up immediately by the 16-year vet, Calais Campbell. Now they set their sights on Gibbs and David Montgomery. Gibbs only seven carries, 17 yards, under 2.5 a run. And he is contained rather well that time. Montgomery scored his second TD in as many weeks, over four per carry, over 70 yards. Montgomery again, Montgomery right down Detroit. Track the status of Detroit's O-line. They didn't have tackle Taylor Decker last week, and they lost another big ugly in that loss to Seattle. The last time Atlanta went 3-0, 2017, a Matt Ryan joint that didn't burn out till the divisional round. They're the team the talking heads spent the week asking, are they for real? Same thing was asked about the Lions after week one, right? Lay down your keys to the game and predictions. That's what we're closing with.